Um, I think that's it, Dan. You can have the floor, and I think you're going to try to share a screen. Yes, you can all hear me, right? And you're all muted. Um, one of the things I, I do want to say is uh, go to meetings a little bit new to me as opposed to Zoom, but I think it's similar. You may want to uh, go to full screen just for the maximum impact during the PowerPoint presentation. So that's one thing there. And I just want to get a little meta and just tell you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to show you my proposal for uh, uh, concepts of what I, I'm proposing. And then I'm just going to show you quickly some things that I did to work through to there, but that'll be in one slide. So it'll go fast. Then I want to talk about uh, very quickly, just kind of talk about the concepts and the values that underlie my approach to this, which I hope are in line with your concepts and values. You know, uh, that's the synergy we want. The process that um, by which I then develop the work with you, with you guys are obviously involved with that. And talk about the, the subcontractors the, that are involved a little bit. It's a little bit different, the public art project work that I do because of the scope and the scale. So sometimes subs are involved in working on it. Then budget, I'll also show you a couple slides of past work if there are people who didn't know that. And then there's some slides at the end that I'm just gonna leave with Ron that are just kind of in the weeds appendices, but I'm not going to uh, go through that because it it will bore you, but the information will be there if if you want it later as a reference. Um, the other thing that I said, I was, uh, Ron and I thought would be most useful is if it might be best to ha just have me go through the, the presentation and then any questions you have, just hold to the end because I may end up covering those things in the presentation. So let's get going. Uh, share screen and here's this. And slideshow, wait, present, slideshow, present from, play from start. Okay, so you should be all be able to see that. So I didn't want to bury the lead. So I'm starting with the, uh, my idea for what I think would, what the, the idea that I am proposing that is sort of my best priority. And there's a few reasons for this one. And you'll see, I went through a lot of ideas to get to here. Um, again, if you know what I've done in the past, these are glass panels. It's a special kind of architectural glass that the images are drawn from paint photographs of paintings that I do specific for the project. And then um, the metal structure is built and the glass is set into the metal structure. Um, a few things about this, and this one I'll talk a little bit more about than the others, simply because I it's the one I think we should consider is, um, first of all, the thing about this is that the, our budget here, even though it's somewhat unknown, the knowable part of it is somewhat limited. And so I tried to design something that could both fit in the budget, but also this is developed in, they're kind of four very identical sections. I mean, the fabrication is such that the curves can be flipped up or down. And what that does means is it gives us the flexibility to add sections or delete sections, you know, have fewer or more depending upon, you know, budget um, and what you decide fits the site best. Um, it also, the way I design this is with catenary curves, if you know what those are, um, but the actual design for the, uh, would not have catenary curves. It would have straight, you know, arc curves because it's simpler to build and it means the glass panels all stay the same size, which makes everything much easier and more affordable. And it wouldn't look very different than this if we did that. Um, one of the reasons I went with this fence concept was because behind that fence there is the brown field. And there was some concern about having something that acts as a fence and can kind of keep people away from going down that brown field or masks the fence. So that's what that is. Um, the curves in this uh, are in one plane. Again, that's what makes it more affordable. 
Um, a few things that are variable in here, I talked about you can move sections, add sections. You can also, uh, or add sections, delete sections. You can also move the sections, and I'll show a second of slide like, slide like that. Here they're in a line, but there's no reason that they necessarily have to be in a line. Um, they can be placed, they can be zigzagged, all kinds of interesting things can be done. Now, obviously, uh, I hope you get this. We're talking a rail trail. And so what I did here was came up with a form that to me was reminiscent of railroad tracks. So it talked about the history, the notion that there used to be a train depot here, which I could not find images of online, but I'll be going through the library archives to see what I can find. Um, so, and then I just played with some ideas for images. The far right is from a public art piece of mine, but, and this is where I do all the research. The other images here are drawn from, one is from the Opera House, a couple of shows at the Opera House, Dancers, that's the second image. Uh, the left image is from a kid, the, there's kids, a kid's painting of trains. And I really love the idea from this project from somehow working with the kids at the elementary school, get them doing artwork and then including that in this project. I just think it would be such a cool way to uh, invite them into this thing. So they're memorialized, you know, then Hyde Park has, you know, creative ownership of this as well. You'll notice also, uh, let's see, the second one is from the Opera House, two different shows there. And then on the far right, you see an image, uh, sorry, the right of the third from the left, you see an image of the courthouse, the Lamoille Valley County, the Lamoille County Courthouse. So it's like, that's what I want to do is draw from those different things. Okay, so I've talked more about this slide than the others. One thing you'll note here is the way the the sun casts the images on the snow. That's a pretty cool element. By the way, this is all invented in Photoshop. So, you know, that's that's the way we do this thing. Well, let's see. It's not. Oh, there we go. So this just shows you the way you can kind of I staggered them here with the idea that if they overlap, sometimes you'll see one behind and another. We the placement of these, whether it's two, whether it's three, whether it's four, five, you'd have to raise a lot more money. But uh, that is something to be decided together by the you know by the community. It's it, there's a lot of variability that can happen. That's really kind of fun and possible here. So this was my first concept, and I still love this. This is arcing over the trail. This particular circular form is based over, based off of the tower I did in South Burlington. Um, that's actually, I just plugged in one of my paintings into there as a placeholder and also a bit of the forensics lab painting in there. Um, I didn't figure out the budget for this because the metal working firms I talked to were, couldn't quite figure out how they would you know what the cost for this would be so that if we just if you decide you want this instead of or in addition have to figure out budget of that um so i did two addition on here where i and i'll talk more about this in the concept a little bit where he just dropped in the hyde park logo i changed the color to make it more visible um i think part of the concept here is to announce hyde park as people are coming through and so um uh, clearly a piece of the imagery here has to do that. And I'll talk more about that in a second. So um, just so you get a sense of the kind of work I went through to get to these places, the arch came very fast. But before I got that panel one, I did all these different variations with different kinds of curves and trying them out. I even did on that bottom right one, trying one with a kind of a train-like form with the metal uh that would be cost prohibitive to build i'm afraid so um we're gonna have to get the train idea in the imagery and i think the the track arc the idea of a railroad track captures that in a way that's more metaphorically interesting than the the train idea there but you can see you know my 
you know, each one of these took about a, a day to do. <laughs> so that's what's involved. So what is the concept? Well, the first thing is this kind of idea of really kind of announcing a, a high park. You know, people come through on this trail, they pass by, they're on their snow machines, their bicycles, they're running, they're cross country skiing. It, it's, it's, not, it's down from town. And so how do they know where they are? And one of the things that was said to me in the call was, how do we get people from the trail up to town? Well, that's something where we, our collaboration really comes through. And I, one of the things I want to say about that is the idea of a destination artwork. So getting people up to Main Street, there's the notion of a destination artwork means, oh, there's this cool piece of art on the rail trail. People get to know it, you know, or they say, oh, we're going to go on the rail trail. You're going to go there. Where, where should we meet? Oh, meet us at that cool piece of public art, you know? And then what happens is the artwork becomes a source of a creative synergy that where art can become an economic engine for stuff that could happen in town. Getting people to fork and gravel on, on that long range plan thing I lo looked at from you guys. Maybe you are people holding up signs. One mother and daughter were holding up an ice cream shop. That's what we want on town. Well, if there's something like this that's an economic engine, that maybe creates the impetus for that kind of town. So I like to perspire you know, pursue with you how we do something in the imagery that creates that synergy. So the other thing is placing the glass for the best viewing, the height, we can vary the height of it. Uh, we can vary the height of different sections. Uh, we can angle it towards the trail, all that's a possibility. The color of these things wants to be a luminous invitation for people. I understand this glass product very well, um, and so I know what colors work to become vibrant. It should be harmonious with the site, but it should also be eye-catching. And it also should make sense with the identity of High Park. So um, imagery should be interesting, but not too busy, more than a pattern. The mock-ups didn't show that. That happens in the ID process. Um, it should include elements that are entertaining to all ages. In Denver, it was really important for me to do that on the right rail station so that people who were like with families with little kids, the little kids could find things in the artwork that were fun and entertaining for them. You know, and I just, I love doing that, you know, that families can engage with that. And then what I talked about the elementary school kids, you know, the idea of their work being in there or my reproducing some of their work and my painting and then how to choose. I'd have to want to collaborate with you in that, include as much as possible. That whole idea just totally jazzes me. So that's that. So what is the process? So if you like what I'm proposing and you want to go forward, so my next step would be actually to divide into the research. That's the substrate, as I was talking about. I talk to all of you. I do talk to other people you recommend. I research the history of Hyde Park, the specific site. I dig into that. I find imagery. I visit the library act and archives, which includes the Historical Society, chat with the folks in the mobile home park, talk to teachers at the elementary school, on and on and on. Kids artwork, photos. I put include flora and fauna because that's something that's important to me. And I think it'd be wonderful if there's some way that we celebrate nature and flora and fauna in this thing. Okay. And then what I do from that, I gather all those images and I design one to four paintings and I make the paintings. Then I photograph them. And then the photographs are digitally mastered for printing in this glass process. And so this was just a refresher without let you know what the process is. So the elements, the subcontractors involved in this, it's SGX glass. Now, one of the things I should say very quickly is the studio I, I used in LA to do best past projects. They had an exclusive with this product. I was in at the very, I was like one of the first people to use it. They've decided not to produce it anymore. They're now 
doing something called DG2, but I found another studio that makes it. It's the only other one in the country and they're actually closer to us. So they're gonna, the glass gets printed in Pennsylvania. So the shipping costs will be less. And so, you know, just wanted to make that clear. Um, I sussed out custom metal fabrication in LWI and Hyde Park. It'd be good to use a local supplier. I'll talk more about that. Uh, the other subs are the footings, precast footings. I priced that out. Town can set those with a, you know, dig. We save money on that. John Higgins, a very nice structural engineer that Michelle gave me the name of, who's in Shelburne. He's agreed to do any structural engineering work we need pro bono. I'd like to give him something. I'd probably give him a piece of uh, a print of mine out of I out of my gratitude to him for doing this. The 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 um the fence one probably doesn't need structural engineering work. The um the uh arch probably does. The glazing I've worked with Acme Glass on a couple projects uh, already. The Burlington and Waterbury talk to them. They're all gung ho to do it. Uh, they give us a good good deal because they're excited to work on it. And then I make the paintings, I do the, for the glass imagery, I create the digital fi files. And the design fee covers really kind of partially part of that. And then the installation, that's just bolting the panels to the structure, but boy, it'd be fun to have a party and get everybody involved in that. So, but I can do it myself. It's, you know, whatever you want. So past work, just wanted to show you to give you a sense of what these things look like in the flesh. If you haven't seen these things, this is Waterbury. Um, this was a very, you know, here again, simple curves. They're just curved in one direction, but they're, it's in a different plane, a little more complex because the glass panels vary in size. We wouldn't be doing that here. It makes things much more complicated. But these photographs I took give you a little bit of a feeling for how luminous these look when the sunlight's coming through them. Um, this is the South Burlington project. And I actually, this is the first one I did. Um, uh, what you can see on this one in the left is, and this is true for Waterbury too, this is lit at night. Um, that is an option here. I did not put it in the budget. It's not expensive. You could do some simple solar lights and then light it at night. The tower on the right, and you can see it on the far left of the left pictures, that's sort of my idea for the arching tower here. This idea that the panels are set at an angle. So as people are coming down the trail, they see them uh, congealing into a single image, but when you are underneath it, they can look straight up and see the sky. Also, the panels here are set on a bias and they're very close together. Um, to save money for this one, I recommend something more like Waterbury. They're just in the straight plane, but that's something to be decided. You know, it, it gets more expensive when we set them at the bias a little bit. Um, and then this is the Denver project. And this is a little simpler just because the frames are already specced out to me, but it gives you a little bit of an idea like these other projects in any of these, the imagery is actually developed, the source imagery in community where I meet with the community. I talk to people, I talk to school children, I talk to teachers, I talk to community arts groups. And this one, they really wanted me to highlight their public uh, lands that they are preserving. And so I did that. And you can see there's like butterfly and flora and fauna in here for kids to find. Each of these was a, um, a, a four by six foot panel. So they were very large and we set them in. And um, one of the things that's cool here is if you look in that middle bottom one, you can see how the sunlight comes through and cast the image on the platform. And that's what would happen in the snow here. So they change at times of day and season. And on the right one, you can see the train pulling through there. So that gives you a little idea of that one. Uh, so now the budget, this is the thing where, so the precast concrete piers, um, and I think this is the kind of the last one before we get into the, the weeds, but I won't go into that. So uh, precast concrete piers, if we do the the four sections in a line, the middle ones where they meet can share a pier, so we can get away with six of them. 
which would be, I priced them, it would be $1,000 for six of them. Excavation and setting appears, hopefully that would be nothing because the town would do it. The metal work is the most expensive part of this. Um, if we did all four in a line, uh, LWI, if they paint it, would be the figure you see there, close to $21,000. Custom metal works would be more expensive. If we have it powder coated, it's about $400 more than that. Um, I'll talk more about that in a second, but it's pricey. It's more pricey than I would like. It's more than we played in Waterbury, but they are a Hyde Park company, so who knows. The glass, if we do four, four sections and seven panels per, would be up the outer limit, the maximum would be 10,000. The printing, if we need CAD technical drawings, it's not clear we would need those um, at all. So um, I already have technical drawings from past projects. That's what I use to get bids on this from those structural engineers. We probably could just use those because the variation off of that is very slight. The glass glazing from Acme would be about $1,000. The setting glass we would do, the design fee would be 3,500. And then there's the painting part. And that's where I put a question mark. Um, the, my time and doing these paintings, $3,500 doesn't cover that. Um, you know, even $5,000 is a big contribution on my part. So that's something we talk about. I believe in public art, I want, but I don't want to rip myself off. So how do we do that? Then do I donate the paintings to, to Hyde Park or something like that? You're getting my work at a, you know, cheaper than anyone, but it is the way we made it work both in Westminster and the forensics lab. I built the paintings into the price of the thing. And Westminster, which was the Denver project, I did this suite of paintings and they decided they just wanted to buy the paintings for town hall. And that, that was, you know, covered some of my cost of doing the paintings. I gave them a good, a good deal. So that's something we would have to figure out and negotiate just to make sure, you know, that even the cost of my materials are getting covered, you know, oil paints are expensive. Um, and the next thing is the, the, the digital mastering work, um, you know, that photography and all that, I would do that pro bono, you know, otherwise we'd be paying the glass company a fortune. Um, and the, the last two, you can see if needed pro bono and lighting, you know, we can figure it out. So you can see that comes in a little bit over that $50,000, $40,000 budget. Although actually, now that I think about it, that 3,500 design fee may not have been a part of that $40,000 budget. I'm not sure. So if it wasn't, we're below budget. Um, if we need to save money, here's the way we can do it. The metal work is the most expensive part of the budget. So do you guys have any favors to call in? Can anybody anybody intermarried with somebody at LWI Metalworks? You know, know any secrets about somebody that you can get them to? So any does anybody know somebody who could charge less to do it? You know, that would be great. Greg had recommended a local um, welder, but he doesn't have the rollers that are used to bend the tubular sec raw uh, tubular pipe. So uh, we could maybe get him, he'd have to rent a roller. One thing I mentioned is we could re reduce the number of sections. As I said, I've designed this essentially to be modular so we can add or reduce sections to save costs on the metal. Uh, just reducing it from three sections instead of four would save uh, about $7,000 in the budget in terms of the metal work and the glass because there'd be seven fewer glass panels, okay? And it would also save in my painting cost because I'm doing three paintings instead of four. The other thing we could do is easily reduce the number of glass panels um, in each section. Uh, if you reduced it from seven from to five, that would save $2,000 in the glass costs um, and some in the metal work as well because they wouldn't have to do as many channels and tabs. In Waterbury, the panels were further apart from each other. They weren't as close set as what I showed you. And it still works. You know, it's how few can we get away with so they still read as railroad ties. And the other thing we could do is reduce the size of the glass. So I budgeted each panel being four foot long, 
but we could easily reduce them each one to three foot in length. And just doing that would save 2000 approximately in the total budget. Okay. So that is, uh, those are some ways we could save in the budget. You know, you wouldn't know that much. Uh, and that. And so the next steps will be my research, make the paintings, site is prepped, metal is fabricated, painted, and then installed. Glass is proofed by me and then printed when I approve it, shipped it from Acme to Acme, then it that's then we install it and then we, we have a big party to dedicate the thing. And that's the when the fun happens. So these are all things, this is the appendices. I'm not gonna go through this. This is, you know, the kind of variables that we would need to decide partly together, partly me, the a listing of the different budget elements again, just so Ron has that to look at. If you wanted to go with DG2 instead of XGX, um, it's the same cost. I can talk about the difference between the two of them if you're interested in that at all. I think going with SGX makes a lot of sense. It's what I've worked with and I like the way it works. And that just goes through that. So that's all of that. And um, maybe I can just open it up to questions. I kind of race through, I can go back and show you the original image or I can stop sharing screen. So I raced through I raced through that in under 45 minutes very very fast. I talked very very fast. I hope I talked slowly enough that you could follow it and I'm happy to show any images again if you want to see them again and if you have any questions about this at all. Um I have a question. This is Lisa. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, thank you so much. It was really well organized. Um, you may have been asked this by other people when you guys gathered, but I left early that day. Um, how about vandalism? Oh, yes, that's I, I, that's, I knew that was going to be asked, yes, so I will cover that. So the, the thing about SGX Glass is it, it's a wonderful product. First of all, it and DG2, this new one, they're the only ways to create an architectural glass with a photographic or a painted image in the glass where it's unaffected by ultraviolet light. So the, the dyes are not fugitive. So that's one thing you should know that's really, really wonderful. When we did the first project in South Burlington, that was a, a hugest concern because nobody had worked with this before. We, we I'd never worked with it. We were, DuPont had just invented that and licensed it to pulp. And so we were really concerned. So um, we did a lot of research on it and we actually oversized the glass out of our concern in South Burlington because it's right next to Dorset Street and we were concerned about cars kicking up, you know, gravel and stuff. What we realized after we did that, that this stuff is almost literally bulletproof. And I say that because when I did the project for Denver, Denver Regional Transportation District, our RTD said to me, we're really, you know, we're concerned about this because we literally have people come into these train stations and shoot their guns into the glass windscreens. What do we do? So the first thing is it's tempered glass. It's just for safety. It's tempered glass with a vinyl, a vinyl image that's baked in between the tempered glass. So it's very, very, very strong. It's seven sixteenths thick, it's thinner than the the stuff at South Burlington. So the it doesn't have to bear the weight in South Burlington. We, with that tower in South Burlington. We had to spend several thousand dollars just on structural engineering for that tower because we oversized it because we were so concerned. Um, it is, it, I don't know if it's literally bulletproof, but it's practically bulletproof. Somebody, something can be kicked up, you know, from the snow machines going through us and it will not mar this glass. If something happened that we couldn't predict, like somebody came and, you know, shot a rocket launcher into one of the panels and destroyed it. 
we have the digital file. They have the digital file. The cost to replace a single panel is $200 because it's $63 per square foot. So they can reprint the panel, send it to us. We just pull it off. It's bolted on. We pull it off. We reglaze it. We replace it. Never had to do it. The South Burlington project has been in place now for 14 years, 15, 14, 15, over 15 years at this point. So it's almost literally bulletproof. So how, how about if spray paint? I think you can just clean spray clean paint off. off the tempered glass. You know, I'm not that clear on that, but I think that that stuff can be cleaned off. Yeah. Sure, because I can see what Dorset Street has is it's a very public place. The problem down here is it's not public at all. And certainly when you get into the evenings, it's, you know, right. there there have been issues for the library with their storyboards being. Yeah, I think not, that those no. things are, you can, I think they can even be, um, if need be, even scraped off, you know, I think. Um, but I don't know the best way to maintain that, but I think it's pretty easy to clean off. I think it's it can off. Be off. Yeah. And okay. it may even be treated, be able to be treated with some kind of coating that uh, doesn't, uh, that where the paint won't really adhere in a permanent way. But you can clean glass, especially tempered glass by list by scraping it without, you know, if you're careful without damaging it. So, yeah. And how about um, people climbing on it or hanging on it or, you know, pulling right. on the metal, the metal parts? I could just see, you know, kids or people wanting to climb on something. How durable well, we, haven't, we haven't had that experience yet, um, but that's a good question. I, I wonder if that would be a good thing. Um, uh, so, you know, one of the things would be to make it high enough. Uh, you know, we could make the height where that's not an issue. The other thing is simply to size it where it's not an issue. I think that um, he talked about making the vertical pipes, Kevin at LWI, like two and a half inches in diameter. So they're pretty stout, the vertical ones. Um, so that's something we could bear in mind. If we wanted John Higgins to take a look at this to make sure that was safe. I mean, the way it's going to be bolted, the only thing I just thinking about it, be, be concerned about that, but if kids were swinging on it, could you detach the vertical poles from their, from their, uh, from where they're bolted into the piers, the concrete piers. So we'd have to size it for that. You know, one of the advantages in Waterbury is that um, because it's a circular semicircle, it gets structural integrity just from that circular design. And if these things are in a straight line, you don't have that same structural in integrity. If they end up being zigzagged, we get some of that. They end up being self-supporting. So it's just something to think about how much structural engineering do we need to do, whether we want to set them up in a way with like a zigzag to give them that structural support. That's the only piece I'd really be concerned about. I don't I think, you know, can a couple of kids, you know, knock them over? What's our experience with flagpoles? You know, I mean, well, this would have a jungle gyms, you know, can we size it where it's like a jungle gym, you know, to, to have that strength? So it's something we just have to bear in mind. Okay, somebody else must have questions. Greg. I don't have any questions. I was quite impressed with your work, yeah. Dan. Um, yeah. I think it's very exciting and it's going to really make Hyde Park Rail Trail a destination. Well, great. I mean, I, I, I do believe in that thing I was talking about because, you know, um, you know, my joy is in the research and getting to know people and getting to know what people's hopes and visions are, you know, and then how we can make that happen. And so, um, you know, and I do believe in this thing, Michelle could probably talk about that as, as the way there can be a synergy between art and community and economy and the way art can then become a, a way to generate economic energy. And, 
kind of the, there's a fulcrum of you know a, becomes a point where you know development comes out from that and so I'm really excited about that and I'm really excited about working with you know people like Callie and getting the kids involved one of the things we did that I didn't show in the water area project that Michelle knows about we there was a community involvement piece in that where the uh the bricks that line the walkways into there because tropical storm Irene had come we had, I ended up getting bricks donated by a Vermont brick company, uncast, uncast. They were not fired yet. And so we had a day where people from Waterbury came and they carved on the bricks anything they wanted. And those ended up lining the walkways in there. So it's all the people in Waterbury now have a presence in that piece. There were bricks where each there was a word on each brick and as you walked in you'd see these things and they were poems word by word on the brick it was wow. wonderful and we also in south burlington i did a series of things with the south burlington high school art classes i met you know it wasn't something i got paid for but i loved this stuff i ended up going and meeting with the art classes we i took them out to red rock park they all had video cameras. So it's the kind of thing I do to develop my work with video. They all took video cameras. I took them through my process of taking video captures and developing paintings. They kind of did that. I came and worked with their art teacher and with them. And then they had a show in the meeting room of Healthy Living Market, which is where the piece is. And their opening of their exhibition was at the same time we dedicated the public art project. So it's another kind of synergy we could do where, you know, if these kids have, you know, are part of this project, and then we have an exhibition of the kids' work, and we have a kind of fun event where they get to show their work, oh, I'm getting really just talking about it, <laughs> while we're dedicating this project, you know, you, you don't know, the kind of seeds you're sowing that are going to change the lives of these kids forever yep. and ever by doing a project yep. like that. So that's the kind of collaboration we can do. I have a few questions if, if anyone else, if no one else does. Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Um, I, and mine is just kind of thinking visionary forward because I know in the original concept of um, this grant, you were thinking about three locations, you know, the either end of the rail trail and something up in the village. And it seems to me, and other people can chime in, but um, with this concept of the railroad track, you could kind of carry that through, you know, I know the focus right now is on that trailhead and the parking area, but just thinking down the road, there could be, uh, I didn't know if you had given any thought, Dan, to uh, you know other locations in terms of that theme of a railroad track somehow, kind of um, connecting the dots somehow. And if you haven't, that's fine. I was just curious more than anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I, not, I would just be riffing here. You know, I think it could yeah. easily be done, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, I, I, lo I love that arch. I love, I love the tower in South Burlington. I, I don't know other people do, but that's pro that's probably cost prohibitive there. That that's something that could be held for later or other artists could riff off of that as well. So I really tried to focus on this site, you know, and, you know, as you see, each of those Photoshop mockups takes, you know, many hours to develop. And it, I, I think the idea that, you know, I was lying in bed at night a week ago and, and just, you know, I was sleepless because everything I had come up with, I just felt like the structure wasn't integrating what the site was about. And then I came up with that railroad track idea. And, but it took the process of going through the others. They're not, they're not wasted time, all the hours, because they, they're generative. You get to a place. And that's the same thing that happens with the painting. So uh, that doesn't answer your question, Michelle, but I think there are ways to riff off that. And I have to say one thing about the railroad tie idea that I love here. So I have kids, they're in their 20s now, but my younger one was so into the little those little wood railroad track 
toys you get with a kid. And what I really love about this one is the the proportion of those panels with the ties really might, reminds me of those kids' railroad tracks. So, uh, so I just love that idea too, as well. Anyway. Yeah. See, I Michelle, I went, I as I am prone to do, galloping ahead. And I said, so, and you're right. Yeah, and I was right into the railroad tracks. I have to say, I do not consider myself sophisticated in art at all, but I got to tell you, for me, I looked at that panel and I immediately went to railroad tracks. So at least it worked with one person, Dan. I went, yeah, railroad tracks. But just think about in the future with railroad tracks, you could do railroad tracks up the hill and do something, a piece of, a little piece of the school and then swing it around so ultimately we end up in our little pocket park as the station. Absolutely. So, so we just got to get into permanent fundraising here. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you said, we can do Dan, the ski piece. We can do the school piece. Michelle, you had a, a second question? No, I was just going to say that um, there's a lot of potential with that railroad track. And it can, the, it can be done in phases. It doesn't, you don't have to tackle the whole thing at one time. And mm -hmm. um, as you say, could be riffed off with other artists and other concepts in the community. We also talked about opportunities for temporary public art installations in that Main Street area too, as a yet another way to bring things, uh, bring people up into the village. And I think there's lots of tie-ins for both the permanent concepts you're working on and other things. So, so uh, apropos yeah. of that, I just want to mention. So um, this is a con that concept is something that's a, a lot of communities are doing now. And the, the first place I had really seen it was actually Westminster, Colorado, where I did those windscreens. Mm -hmm. And at, you know, one of, in my research, one of the groups I met with was, I, they had this kind of cool little gallery and it's a, and it's a, it's a kind of, um, it's artists who belong to it, you know? And they have a, a, a kind of an empty lot next door. And what Westminster has started doing, Westminster is not small. Denver is a huge place. And it's the first city outside of Denver on your way up to Boulder. So it's like Westminster itself probably has a population equal to Vermont and all of Vermont. You know, I mean, these, these are big places. But what they do is in this little thing they do a, a sculpture thing every year where they put out an open call and they get sculptors from all over the united states who apply and they get to have their work in this park for either a year or, or maybe they do a thing where they're overlapping in three-year rotations you know one year new a third come in every year for three years and um so they have ultimately kind of a sculpture park in town with sculptors from all over the country and Westminster kind of does it and they give an honorarium to the sculptors to do it you know and you know since that time I'm I'm a public artist you know these forums and I look at calls and so forth around the country all the time and a lot of communities have started doing this sometimes they're like week-long festivals one-day festivals but they'll put out a national call and people will apply you could do a statewide call start with that initially and then you have a festival on Main Street that brings people to Main Street and um, that also you could have street vendors and all kinds of stuff you know, something like with a New World Festival in Randolph, but a sculpture festival. And I'm not really aware, I mean, Burlington has their art hop, but it could be, I'm not aware of a sculpture festival like this in Burlington, and it's a way to bring people into town. You know, so that's kind of off the subject, but it's, is there something like that happening anywhere else in Vermont, Michelle? Yeah, actually, there are little sculpture and other visual art uh, festivals or exhibits around different communities. Woodstock has their Sculpture Fest, and North Bennington has the North Bennington Studio. Um, it's not studio, North Bennington Sculpture Park. I forget it has a name on it, but um, anyway, there are a few, uh, uh, quite a few sculpture parks around, and some of them do change 
Right. I know, I know I know Sculpture Fest well because it's where I live. Yeah. So I do it every year. This would have a little bit of a different feel, similar but a little different. Yeah. You know, Helen Day like Art Center does the out the exposed exhibit in Stowe. They change that up every year. So there's there's certainly examples around of okay. things that happen. But there's a lot of potential there. So Ron, you're muted. We had a agenda item called next steps. And I guess that's up to the steering committee to figure out which, how you want to go about it. You can have an open dialogue with, with Dan, but I know that there's a draft contract that we had um, passed around. That's just a formal contract that somebody would have to work through uh, either myself with a couple of committee members or whatever, and then get it to Dan. Uh, we also had, uh, within the grant terms, there was a kind of a two-step payment to Dan. So that's that's on the table. We haven't talked about that issue with the uh, preparation of concepts and then the final design as being the two parts related to the grant funding. Um, so I don't know how the how the committee's feeling about going to the next step. Um, we could jump to the designating a couple of you to work on the draft contract. Uh, maybe Michelle can suggest any kind of you know process from this point on i i think in one of dan's slides he did make a note you know if my concepts are chosen and that, i think that's true we have to get we have to have some kind of decision to move forward or geez can you go back to the drawing board and spend some more time for us <laughs> so anyway that's I, that's up to the committee i just wanted to try to highlight where we're at in the process Well, I think ultimately, Ron, the committee would would have to decide, yes, we want to move forward with Dan. And then once you kind of make that decision, then we can work out the details or you can work out the details of the contract and that next piece. <laughs> I guess my my biggest question for people in Hyde Park is how long do we think it's going to take us to raise the money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's because because that's kind of sort of an important step that that you know that is on us to get done. Um, well, the 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 animating infrastructure grant that we gave would pay for at least Dan's time this the thirty five hundred dollar design right fee and then beyond that um i'll just offer up that you can come back for another animating infrastructure grant uh, we'll be offering them uh, likely again next fall um there is in the legislature right now a program called better places that is uh, fingers crossed going to get perhaps some of the ARP funding, but maybe some general funding that's still being um, discussed. So there's a possibility, and we'll know, of course, by the end of the legislative session, whether that moves forward as another possibility for <clears throat> some funds there, for, and that includes but, uh, public art in communities, especially in village and downtown revitalization projects um, they're looking at. So those are a couple of grant possible grant funds um, also, the more community engagement you have in a project like this, if you do some sort of a crowdfunding campaign and people are excited about um, different aspects of it, people may donate, even if it's $5 a person, you know, or something, they might get excited to have something colorful and fun and wonderful down at the rail trail. I think there's some possibilities there, and I'm sure there are other fundraising uh, avenues, but um, without getting into all of that, but I think there's some potential. Greg, you're smiling. What's that smile? I'm thinking, I guess, and I'm thinking maybe, does, does anybody have any does anybody think we should not move forward? 
<laughs> well, I think you know, go, go forward. I think this huh? is this is a very exciting project, and I yeah, think we yeah. move forward. You want me to step off for this conversation? No, it's all pu it's all public, oh, and it's yeah, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, you you may we, we may say something, and you may say, "Hey, wait a minute, get a grip there." <laughs> you can take it, Dan. You can stay. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I mean, I I um, um, I I love that concept. Um, obviously, it appealed to me. I got that it was a train. I'm happy. Um, uh, again, in sort of the working out the details, that if a couple of people would volunteer to sort of work on the working with Ron and, and I think really Michelle and Greg, if you guys could work on doing that, just sort of firming up the contract. Um, we know that some money may be out there, but then to come up with a with a nice little piece that, yeah, we can apply for other money, but let's start raising money now. You know, it's, um, hey, let's do it. And maybe we'll find we're really successful at raising money so that the second phase can get planned a lot sooner than we think it could get planned. Yeah, I think that that's that's a good approach considering the potential funding sources that Michelle was talking about. Um, better to move a little quicker right now so that we can yeah, have something yeah. that's, you know, ready to go is always better than we're still debating the design. So if if there were a couple people we could just um, we could start reviewing the contract. I think that there should be a little consensus vote. I don't, like I said, there's no objection uh, to continuing, but I think for the minutes that I'm taking, we should have a, a vote of some sort to say, let's move forward with Dan and then uh, a couple people to volunteer on the contract review. And then we'll come back as a committee to review the contract and the funding issues that uh, we started talking about with Dan with his time spent as well as the final design. Okay, I'll um, I'll move that we uh, we move ahead with the project with Dan. I second it. And anybody who wants to vote can vote. <laughs> yeah, sure. all, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. got any <laughs> concerns or objections? I, I think it would be great to move it forward because while we're we're rolling into the end of the school year, it would be. Um, I think terrific to have something that, you know, that next fall the kids could get into um, participating in it, you know, and it'd give you, it would give you time through the summer to get all that done. So it would be a great sort of getting back into school uh, kind of a kind of a super fun project to do. Are you talking about the, uh, Susan, the participatory piece with Dan? to do yeah. that design work. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only, I'll just throw out there just that we uh, it did extend the grant, but we were hoping to have projects. I forget what I sent to you, Ron, was it end of August or end of September for an end date? Because just because we have a time frame in which we have to spend our grant funds and get them reported on. So um, we might, I just would have to check on that. That might that would be a piece of next steps if you um, uh, once we get a contractor, you know. The so, idea so are rolling. you saying the kids might need to do something this summer? Uh, possibly, like they're, they're going to be summer enrichment programs. Hopefully, yeah, possibly. I just have to double check on the timing of that for you all. I could and, also um, do it in a way where you know, let's say a painting that's focusing on rail history. Uh, Hyde Park specific history and everything is the stuff I'm researching before August. And then the ones that involve the kids happen in the fall. In other words, I can almost compartmentalize it like that. If that makes the yeah. funding. Because there's kind of multiple, multiple facets to the research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, August 30 for final designs and a final report by September 30. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm and, assuming Dan's good with that kind of a schedule for um, final design by August 30. Then I'd have I'm, to do the stuff with his kids before that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm I think that from a funding perspective, some of these other grant programs like coming back for animating infrastructure or other 
if better places moves forward or if other funding, it would be good to probably have that design mm -hmm. at least mostly firmed up, maybe not every single image identified, but at least uh, mostly firmed up by the end of August, I think. And I there's certain... that, but not the, not the paintings themselves done? Just oh, yeah, that... no, 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 not the paintings, no, no. Right, right. This yes, is just the, con just the concept like you've done, but more specific, like this will have uh, yes. four panels and it will have, you know, these images. No, you don't have to do the work now. It's just figuring out that design piece. So so from that, Michelle, is there some flexibility with, with say, if you when you get into the planning, you want to have uh, six kid panels? make up a number that yeah that you know you're gonna have six kid panels but you got a, some leeway in there as to what actually the panel is going to be right yes okay that okay. would be fine so, yep okay yep. so that gives that then that can tie into the kids actually doing it when they get back in school right yeah mm -hmm. okay you know i have to say i spent some time looking online for images of kids paintings of trains and i put one in the mock-up there's not a lot out there <laughs> so we're gonna be well yeah. yeah uh dan kids are playing with different things these days than when we were kids <laughs> uh -oh. what's a train <laughs> 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 I was watching or, or listening to an old song or something or other that was talking about calling somebody from a phone booth. And I said, the younger generation would have no idea what that song is about. <laughs> well, speak, speaking of kids, I have to get going. We have two really young grandchildren here for a few days. All right. My, wife, Ooh. my, my you know, ages four, four and six. Hey, all right. Um, my wife took them next door to bounce around and Katie Marvin's trampoline. trampoline. <laughs> they just came back in and they're hungry and it's going to get really noisy. There you, there you go. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bow out before it gets. Okay. All right. Go enjoy the grandkids. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and Ron, um, we, we, we can talk. You can just give me yeah. a call in the morning or something. Yeah. Just, I'll, we'll be in touch and I'll, we'll get a couple other people to help us. Okay, great. Okay. So long. Have fun, Greg. Thank you. So I, th I think that's kind of where we're at. I'll, we'll have a little work committee of whoever wants to work on the contract and terms and try to come up with some money um, items to resolve those. They're all pending at this point with Dan and then come back as a committee and then give you an update as soon as we can. I don't want to waste a lot of time on this particular right. step. I think we all sort of know what the limitations are, but um, the sooner we can get that done, the quicker Dan can get to work. So, so I think that's I think that's it. I, I'll, what I'll do is I'll send out the minutes with a just a request if anybody wants to participate in the contract review, I guess is a good way to look at it. And then, um, and that, that'll be the next step before your next meeting. Super. I can I can help yeah. out, uh, Ron. Just I did send you that. That's a sample contract, yep. but just in terms of kind of breaking out the um, what needs to be in it. What, yeah, I, I'm happy to help you guys with that. Okay, too. appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. I think Thank I'm you, all set. Really exciting. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is this is uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I really love the concept, Dan. It's I don't know how other committee members feel or whether the um, you know it, you presented two concepts there. If anyone is leaning toward one over the other, but I'd be curious to hear from folks just quickly if there was any one concept that spoke to you. Not this is not uh, binding. Don't worry. I'm just curious. <laughs> All right. I think we're all set. Have a good night, everyone. I think we're good. Everybody, okay. you know how to get in touch if anybody needs to. Dan, thank you so very much. This mm -hmm. is going to be a lot of fun. Super.
Thanks, Dan. Take care. Bye, Michelle. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.